actually, uh, if you go back, no, I, I, I agree, I agree, I, I basically agree. But if you go back to the history of the New Orleans art scene in the 19th century, this is a totally international community. Um, you know, most of the more, more prominent artists you know, who emerged from New Orleans in the 19th century, the ones that are in the important uh, collections of 19th century New Orleans art, they're from Italy, they're from Norway, they're from Sweden, they're from Spain, they're from Europe primarily. And a few, you know, it's, it's very, very mixed in. You had people like Clegg, who was local, and a few others who were local. But you know, you had, you, the, you, back then, the locals, you know, if you were interested in art, well, you take Richard Clegg, for instance, he was a 19th century, well-known 19th century New Orleans painter. He was a Confederate Army officer who studied at Beaux-Arts in Paris. You know, everybody who's anybody in New Orleans, their kids went to school in Paris. So this was always a historically international city. And it, you know, it goes through that cycle every few generations. It renews itself as an international city, and that's kind of what's happening now, yeah. So, yeah, that's story. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask a question about, um, back to the um, online journals and that type of thing. Um, I noticed in Eric's column, I mean, he is very generous with all kinds of links to all kinds of places. Um, so in terms of what, you know, is going for us going forward and trying to, um, you know, create a site where our scene can be read about, um, maybe, you know, if anybody could offer a little bit how the mechanics of that works. I mean, I know you're, Eric uses, is it WordPress? I mean, it's, you're generous in giving links. So in other words, you're, you're bringing a lot of international journals and that type of thing to your website. So I, I'm just, I guess I'm, have a question about how the mechanics of what is, um, the new project for, uh, Pelican Bomb, you know, it, how does that work in terms of, you know, you have links to major journals, so we certainly can do bring the same, if you understand I'm, I'm about constructing these sites. You know, in, uh, in, in my site, I'm really interested in the whole idea of New Orleans as an international city. Right. Right. And so I try to link with it, anything that I think is of relevance to that relates what's going on here to what's going on elsewhere and vice versa. And I think the rest of your question had to do with Pelican Bomb. Mm -hmm. I'm not clear what the question is. Well, just the mechanics, like if, I mean, it, it's a pretty much open thing. If, if uh, you have, Eric has been able to include links to bring the external sources in, then how difficult is it for once Pelican Bomb is up and running to get it into places that it needs to be. I mean, is it all driven by money or do you just put links? I guess I'm well, it's about how, uh, how will Pelican Bomb be able to be linked to other sites? How, how will... Well, there, there are a number of other sites around the country that do um, online critical reviews. So we've discussed linking to those sites, um, definitely linking to those sites and seeing what those communities are doing. Um, we've also talked about linking to, as I said, uh, you know, other types of websites that may have nothing to do with contemporary visual arts, quote unquote, you know, that explore, talk about politics, or talk about food, or talk about um, education, and um, see how all those sectors intersect with each other. So it definitely is a challenge to start a site, to invest in a site, and to get people to go to the site, but it, it's, that's the nature of the beast of the internet, and how, you know, you have to do social media, as Dan said, you have to take advantage of Facebook and Twitter, and, you know, promote what's happening, what's new, you have to have a community of artists who are really supporting what's happening, and you have to also just connect with people outside of the community of artists. I can't really answer fully how that's happening. We're speaking with professionals 
in those areas, we're speaking with um, people who do ad, web web marketing through advertisements. Um, you know, we're speaking with other website editors. Okay. Um, so it, it's definitely it's a very good question, and it's important to know how you're going to make this site a real resource. Um, but it's knowing how to use the internet yeah, to do that. I, I, I guess because I look at a lot, there's some that are like really dense and it's difficult to read. And then there's some that are more open, and it's, I don't know if it's a question of maybe their, their site is well funded, it's, they don't need to well, run ads. It's keeping constant, it's, it's, it's having new information. This site is going to be um, original content, and it's, it's constantly keeping that content going. Because when you go to that site one week and you come back the next week, you want to see something new and different and innovative. And I think it's also exploring what visual arts is. Um, I just want to say something about this. I don't know, all these definitions of what art is and if a second line is art, if Mardi Gras Indian is art. And I think some people look at the look at it as an object and not as the, the, the context of, of where these these cultural expressions come from and what they're really about. Mm -hmm. There's a Cuban artist um, named Maria Magdaleno Campos Pons, who's she's from Cuba. Um, she's from a, a village in Cuba, I will say a small town in Cuba, where um, the majority of the residents are of Yoruba Nigerian descent. And there's rituals that her family did generations and she came to the United States migrated to Miami she now lives in Boston and she may recreate these rituals outside of the the context of, of what was done with her family in in Cuba and I don't know it may be just washing clothes you know it may be um, a celebration but she would do it in a gallery and she would paint her face or you know and it becomes another ritual and that becomes contemporary art because it's in that context so the, the the, I may, it may be what Willie was saying, I'm not really sure, but the point I was making was ab about exploring what already exists and not saying that because someone's coming here and doing something that may be different for New Orleans makes it um, a different kind of art or makes it contemporary art or makes it innovative. Um, look at the innovations that are already here embed embedded in the culture because that's, that's what she did and became famous for it in Boston or in the United States, but the people who live in her community are famous for it because it's what it is. Um, but I don't know if I answered your question about the website, but it's definitely something that has to be addressed. And yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I was just curious if it, if it was one, because they were talking about ads. Right. And I didn't know how much, you know, is this one going to be one where it will be dependent on ads to be able to fund the continuum of it. That you know, will be one of the revenue generating sources. Okay. That that's is important curious. for that's it to be sustainable, what, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, you Without know, so having to rely on grants. Right, right. That's what I, that's, I guess right. really what I was right. <laughs> um, if there aren't any more questions, I would say that the New Orleanians are finding this cold. <laughs> <laughs> so we can maybe wrap it up, move inside and look at the art. And um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming. And I'd really like to thank the front for doing this. Yeah. <laughs>